Nanites can be incredibly strong, but only if you know what you're doing. In this video, I'll be showing you what nanotech even does and getting the most out of it. So you can dominate the galaxy with your nano machines, son. I'm EP Frio, and I'm known for playing Solaris in weird and challenging ways. I'm sponsored by Paradox to bring you this video, as well as two more on modularity and virtuality ascension in two other videos. Now let's get into nanotech. Let's start with the ascension path, as this is how we can find out what it's good for. When we adopt nanotech, we get an agenda, unstoppable swarm. When it's set, it increases nanite swarm a build speed by 20% and reduces build cost by 15%. Then when launched, we get Nanite Swarmer Evasion plus 20% and Nanite Swarmer Tracking 20%. Now we haven't got to it yet, but we will unlock a new ship type, the Nanite Swarmer. However, this agenda is really cool as the initial effect is essentially the build-up phase of your fleet. Then you want to be at war and fighting when you launch it. This is one of the only agendas that gives ship buffs, so use it well. We also unlock a building, the Nanite Research Facility. It'll cost you 800 minerals and 50 nanites with a hefty 8 energy and 1 nanite upkeep, but will give you free nanotech research unit jobs. This provides a base of 2 physics and society research, one less than a normal calculator, but gives 6 engineering research 3 more than a normal calculator. However, each job has a 4 energy and 1 nanite upkeep, adding 1 nanite on top of what a calculator would be. It's also important to note these are the base numbers, so any buffs or debuffs will get applied on top of this, so a higher base number takes more advantage of percentage buffs. Maths. There is also one upgrade to this that we'll get later in the ascension path. The upgrade will cost you 2000 minerals and 100 nanites, but increase the job gains to 6, by increasing the energy upkeep to 10 energy and 2 nanites. This gives it the same amount of jobs as the max re research lab. ep 3 I hear you ask. Is this worth to build? It's a tough one. I don't love the decrease in physics and society, and it's quite expensive to upkeep and build, but the increase to engineering is insane, as any buffs to engineering is even better. And don't forget, most ships and weapons are in engineering, so you could rocket ahead of your rivals in terms of military power. I'd suggest building a couple, but be careful of your economy. I'd still have mainly labs for a more balanced empire. And finally, you get a starbase building, the Nanite Harvester. This is a 500 alloy starbase building, and it's pretty good. It affects the system that it's built in, and uncovers a size 0.1 nanite deposit on every rock, planet, moon, and asteroid that does not have any research station deposits. As the Ascension Path states, we're nanotech, so we're going to need nanites. This will just be one of the ways we will get nanites, but you're going to want them on every starbase you have. But don't worry, they won't all stay at 0.1 size, but we'll have to get deeper into the tree for how that changes. This was one big opener of an Ascension Path. There are hints that we're going to be wide, as we're going to need a lot of starbases, and we're going to get an agenda for war. Wide is a way of playing Solaris where you expand, 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 getting as many systems and planets as possible, and crush those who are in your way. However, there's a lot more to come, so let's see if our claim is backed up. On the first left is aggregation system. Here we unlock the upgrade to the research facility. But more interestingly, food from agri drones minus one, nanites from agri drones plus 0.2, minerals from mining drones minus one, and nanites from mining drones 0.2. Yes, this applies everywhere. You don't have a choice if you want to finish this ascension path. If you notice you're lacking these resources, this is why, but you get another way of getting nano machines, son. Moving on to the first right, molecular reconfiguration. Another new building, the nanotech cauldron. The building is quite unique as it produces a flat 15 alloys without the need of any population working it. This does sound insane. However, it comes with a hefty price tag, with a base of 30 energy and 3 nanites a month. Nanites shouldn't be too big of a problem, as there will be multiple income sources for them, but the energy can add up a lot. But if you wanted to buy alloys from the market at the default rate, it would cost 5.2 energy per alloy, so 78 in total for 15 alloys. This isn't the best way of looking at value, as the value can easily change depending on supply and demand, but puts it more in perspective. In conclusion, if you're lacking pops and minerals, this could be a great source of alloys. However, in general, it's either better to just build alloy jobs, or as we'll We'll see you later, just go full nanite production and build your ships out of nanites. We also do get access to the nanite transmutation tech, which gives the nanite transmuter. This also does not require any jobs and gives two moats, gases, and crystals, but an upkeep of five energy and one nanite. This is a much better deal as just one of these rare resources costs 13 energy off the market, therefore 78 energy per month. The nanite should not be a problem as well, and it essentially combines three buildings into one saving valuable building slots. This one is a no-brainer. Build this to cure any rare resource deficits, 
get rid of your old square resource buildings and thrive. Both of these have no limits. So any planet you conquer that have no pops, you could just fill them with these to make use of the planet. Now, moving on to the second left, unbridled consumption. This unlocks a planetary decision to subsume a world. Once the decision is selected, a situation will start. This situation has two approaches, one to carry on with what you're doing and another to stop at the cost of 1000 unity. The decision will take roughly 100 months. While the decision is ongoing, the consumption will apply devastation to the planet, but also will yield nanites for your empire. Once it's over, you now have a nanite world. It will be at 50% devastation, but will tick down back to zero. So this planet's going to start weaker. Firstly, you have uncapped districts to the size of the planet, when you can really push this planet into its own specialized world, energy, minerals, or alloys, usually. It's up to what your empire needs. We also get free designations to help with the specialization. Firstly, the machine world. This is a jack of all traits designation, giving you 25% industry, mining, and generated district build speed, and 5% resource. This is a nice little buff. However, I would only use this if you're making it an energy world. Next, the machine world foundry. This is essentially the same as the alloy designation. It will shift all consumer good jobs to alloy production, give 25% industrial district build speed and reduce the fabricator upkeep by 20%, saving you some minerals. Again, use this if you're running an alloy world. Last but not least, the most interesting designation, nanotech world. This gives 15% building production, but 10% building upkeep. But then minus 25% minerals and food, but 35% nanites from the relevant jobs, as well as a 5% menial drone output. This was a lot to digest, but essentially what this designation aims to do is allow you to make huge mineral or food worlds and get as many nanites from them as you can while getting some minerals and food. Then with any spare building slots, build the buildings we unlocked previously that do not require workers as we will get those benefits to them. Also, as a side note, ascending this designation does increase the nanites gained, but also reduces the minerals gained, for example. So be careful. We also do get a 100% habitable world, which is always nice. On top of this, every single feature gets turned into a nanite harvest basin, which produces 0.5 nanites. In conclusion, this is essentially a worse machine world. However, it's another source of nanites. And if you're going crazy playing wide, turning any new planets into these to build into minerals or energy producing worlds is not a bad idea and can feed your newfound nanite addiction. Next up, the second right pick, Flood of Supremacy. This pick unlocks a new ship type, Nanite Swarmers, as well as three new Nanite ship parts. Oh, let's break it all down. The Nanite Swarmer is a fast and high evasive one fleet size, but extremely fragile ship. However, it only costs nanites and has no upkeep with a lot of sections you can choose from. But what's the best build and are they worth building? My favorite design for these are the carrier swarmers. We want to stay away. We have 50 hull points and 100 armor. So if something looks at us the wrong way, it will die. With the carrier combat computer as well as carriers, we can run away and kite the enemy ships while our carriers do the dirty work. Throw on an afterburner and you'll be even quicker. You will definitely want to build a lot of these so you can do damage and make sure to always engage at maximum range. If there's point defense on its own, might be quite weak. The only other viable design in my opinion opinion is the torpedo neutron launchers. This design still uses carrier computers as unfortunately there's no artillery for swarmers. Unlike the carriers, this ship will be great at taking out large ships due to how G-slot weapons do more damage to bigger targets. You're going to need a reactor on as you won't have enough power for two neutron launchers. Also, most importantly, going over naval cap doesn't matter as you have no upkeep. Zero times a thousand is still zero. This ship is nimble and quick, but weak like a corvette. The versatility of a cruiser in terms of its fighting style. I think they can be worthwhile building as your main fleet, but only in excessive numbers. And of course, the techs, they're not great, but they can be used on any ship. So what are they? Nanite auto cannons does the same as normal auto cannons. However, it will do more damage than the tier three, as well as the same stats, full range, etc. It will just cost you nanites. So just a straight upgrade. The nanite repair system, however, is a bit different. This is an A slot that will cost a bit of alloys and nanites, but will give you daily hull and armor regen. This is a percentage. Better on bigger ships with more armor and hull. For example, this would be very good on a juggernaut, letting you absorb a lot of damage. And finally, the P slot, Nanite Flak Battery. A straight upgrade on flak artillery in terms of stat, but doesn't cost nanites, and instead of dealing 75% less to armor, deals 50% to armor. I wouldn't go out my way to design ships around these components, but if a design had a previous counterpart, it's worth the upgrade since you'll be swimming in nanites. The final pick is nanite augmentations. This unlocks three new edicts, each having a base activation cost of 2,500 nanites and an upkeep of five. However, these costs go up a lot due to empire size, so these can get pretty expensive to run. However, any edict reduction will also apply. Bear in mind, once you activate them, you cannot cancel them for 180 months, so make sure you can afford them. If we look at each one, 
The first one is nano operated supply chains. This gives 25% network capacity. This isn't awful on the surface. However, if you're really diving into nanites, you don't care about your naval cap as you're using all nanite ships, you don't pay upkeep. However, this could be good to activate if you're using traditional ships and just doing nanites on the side. Secondly, we have coordinated nano complexes. This gives you 25% monthly alloys. On the surface, this is very good. It's not just from jobs, it's your monthly, which is even better. However, again, if you're going nanites, you're building nanite ships, which cost nanites. So you don't need many, if any, alloys. Again, if you're using traditional ships, this could be worthwhile to activate. And last, but certainly not least, nano connect generators. This gives a whopping 50% monthly energy credits. Unlike the previous two, this could be very good. As we're machines, pretty much everything is energy upkeep. So your empire is probably built around giving you a lot of energy. So giving 50% monthly is insane. I would highly recommend getting the nanites to activate and upkeep this edict at the very least. And finally, the finisher. We'll start from the bottom as I think it just makes more sense. We get a huge 50% empire size reduction from planets. This firmly points us in the direction of wide, negating one of the negatives of taking lots of planets, and by half. You can also take imperial prerogative for a further 50% reduction from planets, meaning you get no empire size from planets. Next, nanite harvesters. Your starbase building from the opener now yield improvements every five years. It will either increase the size of nanite deposits or just yield you a sum of nanites. This further pushes us wide as we want as many star bases as possible so we can build this building and get as many nanites from space. Grass the Void could be another amazing ascension perk, five more star bases, and remember to activate the edict to fortify the border very further too. This will give you a hefty supply of nanites and it will only get more as the game goes on. And a new ship, the Nanite Interdictor. This is comparable to a battleship but only takes four ship size like a cruiser. Unlike the previous nanite ship, we do have sizable hull, armor, and shields, and the ability to pick some, which is nice. We have two options to choose from, torpedo or carrier. Personally, I recommend torpedo, running devastated torpedoes with disruptors. All of this penetrates shields, and with a torpedo computer, these ships will charge straight in. These will be great for dealing with the big ships, while our hangar nanite swarmers from previously will deal with the small ships that would cause the torpedo class a problem. These torpedoes will also act like screens for the weak hammer swarms in the back, making for a very complete, capable, only nanite ships that you can theoretically make unlimited amounts of. But remember, you can use any components on these and not pay their special resources, so archaeotechs or more advanced weapons that you may not have strategic resources for. This also applies to the nanite swarmers. Okay, so this is all really cool, but how do we get here and how should I play with this ascension path? Firstly, to get here, you must have three ascension perks already chosen, either individualistic or just alt, then choose the synthetic age ascension perk. Once you take a synthetic age, you will have to push through a situation. I recommend leaving it on default, not overclocking it, as then you can save your unity for when you have nanotech unlocked, try and finish it straight away. When the decisions pop up, focus on nanotech, and then in no time you will have nanotech finished, focusing on nanites and galactic domination. Unlike virtual, like the previous video, I wouldn't entirely recommend going for unity rush. This tradition can be chosen later, and it's going to be better to focus on building up with the rest of the empires in the galaxy. So focus on unity a bit, but also remember science and your economy. Now you can play this however you want. I think the benefits are playing a wide expansion empire. So grabbing a total wall civic like Determined Exterminator would go very well if you're planning on Nanite Ascension. Remember, you get unity for purging the organics. In terms of tradition, I think supremacy as you're going aggressive and yielding as you want a lot of star bases and they'll act like nice cannon fodder if you expand too much. Prosperity will also be nice to buff up your star base output as well as your many, many planets. With Ascension perks, Synthetic Age will be a must, of course, but Imperial Prerogative to completely nullify Empire size for planets will be huge, as well as Grass the Void for more star base capacity. I also highly recommend going Galactic Nemesis. This crisis path goes very well with what you're doing, so you can inflict even more destruction on your enemies. Now, go out there and destroy an entire galaxy just for me. The next and final video will be on Modularity, the jack of all trades. So make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in that one.